Hello everybody, welcome to my channel Life is Chess. In today's video, we shall learn how to play end games. And once again, we shall take a clue from the Cuban legend, ex-world champion, Jose Raul Capablanca. Uh, this position is taken from his game in 1924 against Savielli Tartakover. Tartakover was a player who represented Poland many times in Chess Olympiad and he was considered to be a very charismatic personality, very knowledgeable in chess and there are lots of ideas dedicated to him which are being played today. So let us see the end game between Capablanca and Tartakover. It is very clear that neither side has enough firepower to checkmate the opponent king. The only other way to win is by uh, creating passed pawns, promoting his pawns and only then going for checkmate. Capablanca identified h7 as a weakness in black's camp uh, because the bishop on d3 can uh, attack h7 and also the rook can take control of the h file. Therefore he played the move h5 opening his bishop opening the uh, file for the rook black played a very active defensive move that is rook to f6 he not only defends the g6 pawn but he also intends to counter attack by coming to c6 from where it can attack white's weakness that is c3 the other move gh5 would be met by rook h1 white would get back the h5 pawn and after that the h7 pawn would be left without defense observe how the knight on a5 is out of play it will take about four moves for black to defend the king side so white makes use of the fact and played h5 after which black defended by playing rook f6 white captured hg to open the h file and played rook h1 so that it can enter into black's position through h7 or h8 square black rushed for defense by playing king f8 black wants to put his king to g8 to prevent white's rook's entry but the rook entered before black could. Black played rook c6 defending the c7 square. So we learned it's very important for white or for a player with advantage uh, in rook end games to take file and enter through the 7th rank. The rook on 7th rank not only attacks black's pawn but also shuts the opponent king from the game notice the king on f8 cannot come forward because the rook prevents the king from coming uh, or joining the game it's white to play white played the move g4 simply pushing his pawn majority he wants to create a passed pawn on the king's side and uh, it's very important to note that if black captures c3 the g6 pawn would be left without defense so white can capture on g6 and now the combination of white's bishop rook and two pawns will create attack against black's king which is stuck in the corner of the board the pawns are likely to be promoted or the king may get checkmated therefore Black did not capture on c3. Instead, he played knight c4. He brings his knight to action. White played the move g5, fixing the weakness on g6 and, well, targeting the pawn g6. Black played a very nice maneuver. He played knight check after white moved his king up. He played knight f5. Closing the diagonal of the bishop as well as attacking, renewing the threat on c3. 
Now the G6 pawn is not attacked. If you look at the position for the first time, it seems black has succeeded in his strategy and the pawn on C3 is, uh, well, it cannot be defended. The rook on C6 plays a very crucial part. Uh, look at the rook. It had defended on G6. It defended on C7 and now it is going to uh, win a pawn on c3. This is the position with white to play. I would ask all of you to pause uh, the video and think what you would have played as white here. White played the move, a brilliant move that is he played bishop f5, gf5 and then he calmly moved his king to g3, sacrificing his c3 pawn. The reason is, well, after black captured on c3, white went king h4. White has a passed pawn, an active king and a very active rook to compensate for his pawn deficit. Black played rook f3, attacking the weak f4 pawn. This pawn cannot be defended. So white had not only sacrificed one pawn, but he loses the second pawn as well. White plays g6, black plays rook f4 check and white plays king g5. White offers black third pawn. Here black played the move rook to e4. Instead he could capture on d4 but then we have a very instructive variation. So please pay attention to this. White would have played king to f6 and not captured the pawn on f5. The reason why king f6 is a better move is white wants to have the pawn on f5 so that black cannot harass his king through checks. So this is one rare incident when the pawn, black's pawn is actually hindering him from harassing black's king. Uh, this particular uh, theme is called uh, umbrella in chess because the pawn on f5 plays a role of umbrella stopping the reign of checks. White threatens rook h8 checkmate. The only way for black is, well if black goes king e8, he could have gone king g8 but that wouldn't make much difference because white could capture rook c7 threatening checkmate. Therefore, king e8 and white could play rook check, king d7, g7 and the only way how black can uh, defend against promotion is by giving away his rook by playing rook g4. Uh, white would win the rook and the game very easily. Therefore, black played the move rook e4. White's king entered, threatening a checkmate on h8. Black played king g8. And before capturing on c7, renewing the threat of checkmate, white played one intermediate move, rook g7. After rook h8, he played uh, king h8. He played the move rook c7, threatening a checkmate on c8. Black played the only move, that is rook e8, defending and now black's position is hopeless because his pieces are paralyzed. The rook on e8 cannot move. The king on h8 is cornered thanks to white's rook on 7th rank. So white now captures black's pawns. He captured on f5. Black tried counterplay. But once again white went uh, king f6 threatening checkmate. Now without the pawn on f5, black played rook f4 check, white played king e5, attacking the rook and pawn, black played rook g4 and another instructive moment that is the move g7 check. White offers black the g pawn, he offers to exchange the rooks, that would leave white with an elementary win in king pawn endgame. Thanks to white's advanced king and a passed pawn and possibility of capturing both the pawns with his king. 
Therefore, black did not capture on g7. He played king g8. White picked up the a7 pawn and after which he picked up the d5 pawn. White is two pawns ahead at this point. Uh, we can recall there was a position where white was two pawns behind. So the rest of the games, uh, the rest of the game is quite easy because white, uh, the g pawn, having performed its duty of pinning down black's pieces, uh, cannot queen at this moment. So white has to queen with his other passed pawn, that is the d pawn. The rest of the moves were. Well, white kept on pushing his d-pawn, black waited, white offered to exchange the rooks by playing rook c7, black played rook a1, king c6, rook a4 and white played d6. The d-pawn is unstoppable, black resigned. It was another brilliant performance by Capablanca. To recall the lessons of the game, the first point was white identified black's weakness. The next was he invaded into black's position with his rook and the third and the final lesson was activation of his king even at the cost of pawn. So I hope you like this video. Keep watching 